Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. I am here with Jane Metcalf, yay! The founder of Wired and also the founder and CEO of Neolife. Oh my gosh, I am so excited to talk to you. You are like a personal hero of mine. Like, no, it's truly you are. I mean, amazing. I have so many questions, but I want to start out with Neolife and I want to talk okay. about that a little bit because okay. I am like a Neolife junkie. But for those who might be watching who are not Neolife junkies yet, can you explain what Neolife is and what it is that you're covering in this whole world of health tech and the future of medicine? So what is Neolife? So Neolife is personally, it's, it's kind of my personal journey to discover what the future of health looks like and how I can be like the healthiest, most vital, um, smartest homo sapiens I can be. And it started with my own personal health crisis, you know, it's sort of when I hit middle age. And then it was exacerbated by my mother, father, and stepfather experiencing uh, mental health and cognitive decline. And so as a sort of tech junkie and future file, I started looking for, you know, first of all, what is the leading edge of, of science as far as the brain is concerned and brain health are concerned? And how is technology changing that? And so Neolife has started as kind of my personal journey of exploration into those subjects. And along the way, I found like extraordinary people, extraordinary ideas, um, and amazing innovation. So Neolife is sort of storytelling around that. Oh my God, this is why you're my idol. Like, I just want to hug you. Like, no, because it's cool. Because like, I am like, oh my God, I'm hugging Jane Metcalf. Oh my God, okay. Um, so I'm like too completely like rocked now. No, no, no. So this is the thing, because like I share this passion for finding like these cool stories about people who are just, you know, thinking about the way that we live our lives and how we can live our lives better differently and who are really taking like this this very futuristic, very innovative approach to integrating technology to some very human issues. So some of the stuff I love reading on Neolife are like, I'm a big microbiome junkie. I love that. And you guys talk about like even sex and technology and some of the future of sex stuff, longevity, things like that. Do you have like yourself, like a personal area of like interest? Like do you have one thing that you are just like, oh my God, every time I see an article about blank, I have to stop and read that. Oh my God. So um, we're just designing our website right now and everybody keeps saying, what's the taxonomy? Like what are the three navigational no. things that you need? And I'm like, no, because it's all integrated. And yeah. in fact, you know, these areas are so siphoned off and cordoned off. And there's like, the neuroscientists are not talking to the microbiome people and the genetics people aren't really talking to the longevity people. Right. And no one is talking enough about nutrition. Oh and so, God. you know, Neolife is really um, an, an effort to bring all of those leading edge thinkers and, and scientists and developers together to have a conversation about how all of these things are integrated. So when you ask what my personal interest is, it started out as neuroscientists okay. because, you know, as a publisher, you know, I've been thinking about how people absorb information for my entire career. Um, and then I also have mental illness and cognitive decline that runs through my family. So the frontiers of neuroscience have been something I've literally been thinking about for 30 years. Uh, but then I began to understand what the impact of the microbiome is and that you know highway between the gut and the brain. Right. And all of a sudden it's like, that's sort of become my organizing yeah. principle. And the business that I did before Neolife was a chocolate factory. And so I was thinking right. about theobromine, which is this extraordinary molecule. I mean, it looks like exactly like caffeine, except there's one hydrocarbon atom difference. And so where caffeine is a central nervous system stimulant, as is theobromine, it's also, theobromine is a soft muscle tissue relaxant. Oh. And so it's got all of the mental benefits with none of the physical stuff. And so I began thinking about, um, you know, uh, miracle molecules as far as the brain is concerned, um, but also the impact on the rest of your body and the microbiome. So I. I would have to say it's somewhere between the microbiome and neuroscience, but oh my, my other big um, like Jeopardy category is women's health. And the interesting thing about women's health is, you know, when you say women's health, people think, you know, fertility, basically. Right, totally. And, you know, yeah, that's a very, very, very important part of what it means to be a woman. But, that is not all of but it. guess what? <laughs> there's a point at which we are no longer fertile right. and there's an increasing amount of lifespan that happens post fertile sure. time. Um, and women suffer from, you know, heart disease and um, uh, neurological uh, conditions and so forth in much higher rates. And they don't get diagnosed as quickly. The drugs don't work as impactfully on them as on others. And so 
you know, thinking about how the larger than 50% of our population ages and what the diseases are that impact them is, I think, really, really interesting. Yeah, and there's just not enough attention paid to that. I feel like, I mean, that it's so funny because I was talking to somebody earlier today about that very issue, about how women's health has just become synonymous with fertility. And it's like, oh my God, there is like so much more to life around that. And it's like, we really need to do a better job of coming up with ways that are tech enabled to help with like a whole, the woman's whole health life rather than just tracking her period or knowing whether or not she's going to have kids. So and, very cool. And the interesting thing is the minute you start talking about women's health, then you have to start talking about minorities in general, yeah. right? Yeah. And so everything has been modeled off of men's health because, not because we're misogynistic, but because men's health is simpler and therefore that becomes the model for scientific research and drug development and so sure. forth. But you can't stop there. That's just the first step. Now you have to look at, okay, how does female health complicate the issue? You know, how does African-American health or Asian, you know, peoples or whatever, Ashkenazi Jews, you know, how do each one of these different categories expand our understanding? So you just can't stop with a male model. But it starts in mice, you know? It's like we do the research in mice and they're all male mice, you know, because the female biology is too complicated. Well, I mean, it kind of is complicated. I mean, you know, but I mean, you, it has to be for what it's designed from a biological standpoint to do, which is amazing. But it's like it requires a different kind of healthcare as a result of that. Okay, I want to pivot here and I want to ask you about the difference between us yes, pivoting. Um, so I want to ask you about like with Wired. I mean, you guys celebrated like a major milestone this year. 25 years. years. It's crazy. 25 years of Wired. 25 yeah. years. So, I mean, you guys started covering technology when it was like, such a different world. I mean, like 25 years ago, it's like no smartphones, like no, like very limited use of PC. Smartphones, we like, didn't even have cell phones. cell phones. Right. I yes. mean, like it wasn't different. I mean, like the fax machine was actually no. a hot piece of tech. Right. And so and it was always bad technology. Well, I knew right I mean, from the start the fax feel like machine. You forget it, but yet, yet it is still around, especially in healthcare. But I'm, I'm curious. Right. I How know. fucked up is that? So I mean, fucked it's up. Like, let's take something digital and then put it in a non-communicable format and then transmit it digitally yeah. only to be received in an analog format Imagine again that. and then digitized on the other side. And then we wonder why there's like an interoperability showcase at a, at a conference like HIMSS where it's like we need to dedicate an entire football field to talking about making things work. However... The question I was going to ask you was, so you've 25 years of covering the technology space, and now you've launched Neolife, which is really focused on technology in healthcare. What are some of the, are there similarities between what you're seeing covering CRISPR and microbiome and like this health tech, health innovation space, and what you saw when you guys first started covering technology in the way that you did when you started Wired? So I think there's a lot of similarities and there are some very, very, very significant differences. I want to hear about both. Okay. So <laughs> in terms of the similarities, what I discovered was um, extraordinary people with a real passionate sense of responsibility and opportunity about how technology could transform the world, how it could solve the problems that people were trying to solve. Uh, and so in that sense, I find what I'm doing with Neolife to be very analogous to um, what I was trying to do with Wired, yeah. which is, you know, save the world. We're gonna save oh, the is world. that all? So, that's <laughs> all? so 25 years ago, we're going to save the world with digital technology. You know, we're going to have multimedia. We're going to have networking. We're going to have uh, collapsing of hierarchies. We're going to have the opportunity for individual voices, for things that used to be you know, only like very richly funded yeah. to now bubble up and so crowdsourcing and all and that. You've sort seen of thing. that happen, right? And we are totally seeing that happen. Um, fast forward to what I'm seeing happen in the bio space, you know, now we have people who have those digital skills, but behind them they've got 15 years of really deep study into genomics or neuroscience or, or microbiome, molecular biology, whatever it may be. Um, and so those are where I see the similarities. You know, the differences are digital technology was not a life or death thing. Yeah. And I cannot emphasize that enough because the whole idea that we're going to move fast and break things was like, fine, because it's digital it's, yeah, and it, it didn't exist before. Right. You know, you can't do that in life sciences. You can't move fast and break things. Um, are you frustrated by how slow, though, it goes or no? Do you think well, it needs to be? The next thing I was going to say is regulation, yeah. right? So there was no regulation of the digital space because it was un 
uh, unoccupied. You know, I was one of the early uh, board members of the Electronic Frontier Foundation. And so we had this Declaration of Independence of Cyberspace, which was easy because it hadn't been colonized. Right. Whereas in this world, it's very deeply colonized. The colonial system has existed basically since the beginning of time. And so now we're trying to disrupt an entrenched system with lots of conflicting um, points of interest and uh, economic incentives and so forth. And so, you know, in those two instances, I think, but the fact that it's existed for a long time, that it's highly regulated, yeah. uh, and that it is, in fact, a question of life or death, makes it much more difficult to transform. Do you think, I mean, like, so I, I talk to a lot of people in this space, and so do you. And, like, and the technology side, like, pure technology from the last 25 years with Wired, and then now with what you're doing with Neolife, and it's like, I almost sometimes wonder, and I'd love your opinion on this, do you think, like, I mean, because we know we're slow here in healthcare to adopt, because we have to be, from for the reasons you just said. Are we too hard on ourselves, or do we need to, like, have a reality check and pick it up a little bit? Well, I guess it depends on which aspect of this you're talking about. Okay. I mean, when it comes to electronic health records, it's like, oh my God, are we still trying to come yeah, up with this? I mean, still trying to talk about this. <laughs> what is the matter? What is the problem here? I mean, we used to cover that. We had a magazine before Wired what? called <laughs> Electric Word. And I remember talking about electronic health records in 19... 88. Oh my God, no. I know. And it's no. like, really? And then, you know, we were there at the launch of Healthion, you know? And it's like, why? Why is this why? still a topic of conversation? And why are we talking about fax machines, you know? Right. And so my bank has gotten over the idea that, you know, it's privacy and, and all the rest of it, you know, can't yeah. be hacked. So it's like, you just get over yourself. So in that, in that regard, we need to move fast. I want to know, too, what your thoughts are about, like, basically your two worlds colliding. So the traditional tech companies, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, coming into healthcare. And they've come before, and it didn't work out so well. But it seems like this time they're getting a lot more traction. Yeah. And people are looking at them as like, okay, and now we can sit back because this is just going to be fixed. Apple will take care of it for all of us. Yeah. Ah. Or, or would Jeff you? Bezos, Bezos I mean, and Amazon. You I know. Trust Amazon to take over all of So, what do you think money. about this? Do you think this is a good move? Do you think, like, I so, mean, yes. what do you think? A silver bullet, yes or no? Like, give me your input on this. Yes, and. Yeah, no, but. You know. Yes, tell um, me. So, so, on the one hand, I think that, um, you know, the technology world has tried to take over healthcare for decades, as we've just acknowledged. And I think in many cases came without a sufficient understanding of the complexities of the system. You know, biological systems are enormously complex, oh, yeah. but healthcare systems are 10 times more complex totally. than biological I mean, like, yeah. systems, <laughs> and perhaps even murkier. Um, and so I think now, you know, multiple assaults on the healthcare industry have led the tech industry to be a little more circumspect. Um, you know, the logic of technology um, is akin to the logic of biology, but different. Yeah. And so I think there's a much healthier respect for the differences than there's ever been before. Um, having said that, you know, the technology companies are still coming at it from a digital perspective. Right, right. And, you know, there's a lot of conferences about how technology and engineering can solve problems, but without that underlying understanding of wetware, you know, there's yeah. still gonna be a conflict. And so I think the respect that's emerged is really important. I think the language is starting to evolve. And yeah. I think, you know, the, the computer science people are starting to understand the language of biology a little bit better. So I feel like the evolution is, is in the right direction yeah. for sure. And I think the thing that kind of lifts both out of their separate domains is, you know, machine learning and artificial intelligence and so forth. And the because. data, really. And I'm curious, too, I mean, like, from a business model standpoint, you know, I mean, this is, like, one of those conversations where it's just, like, you know, you have somebody, you brought up Bezos, who's, like, a master at, like, reinventing business models, or even, like, other consumer companies, like the retail ones, like Walmart. I mean, like, right. masters right. at reinventing. And these people are all coming. I mean, CVS, Aetna, it was, like, the corner right. drugstore just bought a health insurance plan and a PBM, like, people. They know this is more nuts about the health of their communities then, yes. than the hospitals do or the insurance companies right. do. So they can anticipate that you are pregnant. They can anticipate okay. that you are at risk for obesity and diabetes. I mean, right. these are the things that matter. The data actually do show us stuff. And, you know, there's great information like on Yelp, and the Yelp people know when a flu epidemic is outbreaking totally. because all their restaurant reservations are canceled. Right. Because people are sick. Do you think we've hit an inflection point where instead of perhaps calling this health tech, it's tech health? Yeah, maybe. 
That's interesting. I don't know. I'm like, I'm just yeah. curious. Like, I, mean, well, I, I like that because of the whole concept of digital therapeutics in general. Right. Right. It's like, do we wait for you to get sick and then give you a pill? Or do we anticipate what's happening with you and intervene on some digital format, you know, whether it's online health coaching or, you know, uh, clinical depression that can be either diagnosed or treated, you know, online, you know, it's not having to send people into the hospital, but treating them, you know, at home. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So maybe, yeah. I don't know. We'll have to talk about that. that. Yeah, we should flop that. Okay, let's try that. All right. Last question for you. I always like to ask, especially people like somebody in your vantage point, which I think is so unique because you're just really covering and you're just so familiar with the technology standpoint. And then now with the stuff you're doing in Neolife, just like really that emerging science. What do you think is like hot and what's not this year? Like, is there anything that you're over? from like a health innovation, health technology standpoint, like you're like, we talked about EMR, like that's it, done, don't want to talk about that anymore. But what, is there anything else that you're over? You know, I think genome sequencing, I, I, in a sense, I'm over it. And Why? Yet, well, that surprises because, me. Well, we've been talking about it for a really long time. And so I'm sort of over it in the sense that, let's just get on with it, okay. right? Let's just sequence people at birth. Let's just have a roadmap of the things they are at risk for and help them give them the tools they need to manage their care yeah, yeah. and their evolution over time, and let's move on, right? right? Like, yeah. That should just be an underlying, that's just a given. Let's move on to the other things that we haven't figured out yet. Okay. We know that's important. Same with the microbiome. Yeah. You know, we know this is important. Let's just track this you know, over time, right. and now let's move on to the other things. What are you most excited about? Well, no, I like that about you. So what else, what, what are you most excited about, I guess, like <laughs> next couple years, like really yeah. taking a hold? So the thing that I'm both excited by and um, and obsessed with and and a little bit terrified by is synthetic biology. Okay. You know, it's our ability to actually reprogram cells and to like yeah. create DNA from scratch. You know, I'm really interested. Having spent a certain amount of time in the food industry, I'm really interested in ways that we can use our land and our water uh, and our digestive systems in more holistic ways. Right. And so I feel like you know we've got. Meat, uh, meatless meat, you know, we've got plant-based proteins, right. we've got, you know, all sorts of different ways of thinking about, we've got, you know, insect proteins. How long is it going to take for us to think differently about food? And, you know, what is the cultural response to this going right. to be? People are sort of all up in arms about something that's labeled GMO. Yes. And yet there's no doubt in my mind that genetically modified foods are actually the best way to manage our resources to both, you know, preserve our land or free up our land, um, and to feed our growing population, and to increase the nutritional value of the things we put in our bodies, and track that in terms of our microbiome and what the impact is on our diet and our and our health. So. It's all coming together, Jane. It's all coming together. I love it. Oh my God, thank you so much for stopping by to talk with me. It's such a pleasure to be able to speak with you. And again, like, like such a fan, super fan. Thank you, Jane. I'm Jessica Navasa with WTF Health. Thanks so much for joining us.